Hi, I'm Chuck Howard, Metal Roof Consultants. I've been in the metal retrofit business for a long time, and I'd like to be able to, to show you here exactly how a retrofit roof can convert a flat roof that leaks into a pitched roof that doesn't leak. Um, to start with, what we're standing on here is a modified pitchman roof. Uh, it's the second roof in this particular on this particular building, uh, and this one has lasted a little less than nine years before it has failed completely again. They have multiple leaks here. See here exactly the components. There's only three or four main components that we have. First of all, we had to find the framing that's in in this particular area. Framing in this case happens to be running uh, this direction, and we find that, and then we attach a clip. Now let's see the back side of the clip here. This is a six-inch leg here and then it comes out approximately four or five inches the other direction. Uh, we attach a post to the back of this leg. On this side, though, before we do that, we've, we've attached the uh, clip to the top of the structure underneath. We go down through the build-up roof, through the insulation, through the original roof, and we go into the top of the structure with two fa at least two fasteners, sometimes three, depending on what the load conditions are, but attached to the existing framing. You can see the dark hot tar that we put around that, which seals this temporarily so it doesn't leak during construction. You can see, you can see the flimsiness of the existing uh, uh, modified bitumen roof, and so we really have to watch it because we're now poking holes in a roof that already leaks. You have to, have to do that or you're going to run into trouble. And this post attaches to the clip. This happens to be a 4-inch 16-gauge uh, post and a channel post, and it goes up to a specific height to support a purlin that runs underneath the roof panel and supports the roof panel. Now, this is just like a metal building in this particular case that has purlins in it, and we have to have some way to support that purlin. Now, if you'll look around this way, you'll see that the, that the purlins, each one of them, this one ends up a little bit lower than this one, which is a little bit lower than that one, a little bit lower than that one. And what we've created in this particular case is this is a 3 fourths inch per foot of pitch, which is more than enough. We can go as low as a quarter inch per foot uh, with a metal panel like this. So now we've created a slope where we can install a metal roof panel um, that will get the water from the high side all the way to the low side. Now, what do we do with units? In this particular case, this is a large five-ton HVAC unit. Uh, this is where it used to sit before, before we put the framing up. We've come in, we've lifted the unit, we've raised it, put it on a new uh, curb. You can see the bottom of this 060 aluminum curb that we put. Framing to support the curb, just like you would for a door frame or anything else. You just frame out for the curb, set the curb on top of it, set the unit, which you can't see here, on top of the new curb, and then extend the ductwork. In this case, it's insulated ductwork. Extend the ductwork up and connect it to the, uh, the new unit. Of course, all the electrical, uh, gas piping if necessary uh, goes up to that unit so that unit is operational. As we speak right now, this unit is operational and has been for a while, even before we put the uh, roof panels on there. Um, on top of the purlins, I, if you can see this in the video, on top of the purlins there's a foam spacer, a very collapsible foam spacer continuous that we put on top of the purlins that separates the bottom of the panel from the top leg of the roof purlin. And that's to keep the chatter down so the wind blows through here. It doesn't have the metal to metal. To metal. It also provides for a little bit of a thermal break um, to keep the rest of this framing a little bit different in color and in temperature than you're going to have with the panel itself. Uh, we're at 80 degree day today when we're under here. It's, it's probably 75 or so degrees in here. Uh, this panel has a, um, uh, has a reflective surface on it. It's a dark blue panel, but it has a ceramic reflective surface on it. That is re reflecting 80 to 85 percent of the uh, of the sun's rays uh, now, and uh, and it keeps this panel very very cool and keeps this space conditioned. You can see in the distance down here where we put insulation under uh, on top of the existing roof. That's six inches R19 of insulation put on top of the uh, existing roof, which gives it a new blanket. We already have two inches of rigid insulation plus the build-up roof and. Um, uh, and that is going to add an R19, which will, which will increase the thermal capacity com uh, uh, com considerably in this particular roof system. We vent this entire cavity that we've created in here. We're going to move the air four to five times an hour. So this entire cavity, we're going to move the air. We pull the air in from the edges of the roof, 
and we're going to pull it out through a series of wind-powered ventilators, uh, non-mechanical ventilators that we're going to put at the high sides so we can have a constant flow of air through here all the time. It dries out the existing roof as well as eliminates the possibility of condensation. The space is very, very dry when you do that. You don't have to worry about condensation uh, on, on any of the, the red prime framing or the bottom side of the panels or the, or the banding fasteners, anything like this. It's a very dry space and it dries out any moisture that's accumulated into the existing roof. The other thing we do from the framing, framing standpoint, sorry for the noise, we're putting the roof on right now as we speak, is we put the cross bracing in here to keep this the framing system from racking. In this <laughs> Approximately every 40 feet or so, we put cross bracing all the way from the E all the way up to the high side, and it keeps the, the panel of the framing system from racking. The, the banding that I talked about before, which is right here, it goes on top of the purlins from the eave to the ridge, and it keeps the framing from moving this direction. And the cross bracing keeps the framing from moving this direction. So therefore, the framing itself is extremely, extremely uh, stiff uh, because the panels float. They have a concealed fasten clip, which you can see the bottoms of here, the concealed fasten clip, and that this leg goes up into the into the clip, into the panel seam hooks onto the male seam, and then the, the two-part clip at the bottom allows this to move and expand and contract with the panel, with the base of it staying firmly attached to the top leg of the, of the purlin itself. So this is called a concealed fasten floating clip, and uh, it takes all the thermal expansion and contraction out of the framing, but the framing has to be stable and support itself. The panel gives no diaphragm action to the framing. And that allows us to convert this flat roof that leaks into a pitched roof that doesn't leak. The panels will last, we've done, I've done one uh, 25 years ago, just down the road from here, that has, uh, has been there and it's, uh, it doesn't leak. It's been there for a long time. They expect it to last another 50 or 60 years, and this one we expect to last maybe 80 years. So um, anyway, they don't, now they don't have to worry about replacing this roof. They've got a metal roof that will last them a long time.